OK, in this video we're going to take a look at the connections to dash module number 4, which is the tachometer board. Um, for anybody who's been looking at the um, earlier videos, you're probably getting quite familiar with the arrangement now, and the arrangement on this module is no different. Um, we have a D-type connector. In the case of DM4, dash module number 4, it's a 15-way D-type connector. And we have a set of terminal block connectors, numbered from 1 at the extreme right, to 37 at the extreme left. The pins on the D-type connector again are labelled from numbered from right to left, so upper right is pin number one on the socket and upper left is pin number one on the plug. Let's start then as usual by looking at the essential connections to the module. We'll start with the power supply, a switched ignition power supply, and that goes in on pin number one of the D-type connector or pin number one of the terminal block connectors. The ground return for the power supply goes in on pin 15 of the D-type connector or alternatively pin 2 of the terminal block connectors. In fact on this module pins 15, 14 and 13 are all grounded so you can use either one of those. Just shares the current a little bit. Now, pin number 9, um, if you remember, these D-type connectors are primarily to retain compatibility with earlier versions of the module, or at least with cars wired with these plugs for the earlier versions of the modules. And one thing we had on the early version of DM4 was the facility to switch on the power to the gauges, the bar gauges at the bottom, separately from the power to the actual taco unit just to reduce the amount of glare if you're driving at night. Now we've tried to retain that on this later version of the module. Um, that power supply that drove the gauges at the bottom went in on pin 9 of the D-type connector. So pin 9 of the D-type connector on here, it doesn't actually power the gauges but it's looked at, it's used as a discrete input which the microcontroller will then use to determine the same functionality. So if there's a power supply on pin 9, which can also be connected to terminal block pin 4, if the microcontroller sees that supply, then it will enable the gauges. If not, then it won't enable the gauges. That's actually an option. You can have that functionality there or not. So it does retain the capability of having functional equivalent to the earlier units. OK, the taco signal, the actual signal that drives the RPM gauge or tachometer, is one which we pick up from the dash connectors behind the dash. So let's just take a look at those connectors. The best place to pick up many of these connections to the dash modules is the stock connectors behind the standard um, instrument cluster. Now if we remove the instrument cluster, the stock instrument cluster, we're going to see two 14-way connectors, a black one at the top and a white one at the bottom. This is a photograph that I took from an 82 or an 83 car and in fact I think the connectors, um, this pinout applies to cars between 82 and 85. Here's another photo of a the same connectors but on a car a bit later, I think about 86 and 86 Firebird this was, and you can see that there are different pins fitted and it turns out that the connections to them are significantly different. There could be other configurations as well, but as far as I'm aware, there are only two main configurations that I'm aware of. The configuration that we see on the left for 82 to 85 cars and the configuration that we see on the right for 86 through 92 cars. The connector's pins are numbered as shown. The upper connector starts with pin 1 at the upper right and the pins are numbered counterclockwise around the connector. The lower connector is connected, the, the lower connector is uh, numbered with pin number 1 at lower left and again numbering counterclockwise around the connector. We've just put some labels on here to show the functions of the known pins on these connectors. Um, those little arrows represent whether the signals are inputs or outputs. And apart from the pin 6 on the early cars, 
everything is an input. That pin 6, as we mentioned earlier on the earlier cars, is actually an output of the VSS signal from the dash, generated by a module on the dash, out to the ECM for it to control the torque converter lockup. You'll notice that there are a few connectors that I'm not sure of the function of. That is pin 5 on the lower connector of the early cars and pins 4, 5 and 6 on the upper connector of the later cars. So if any of you have clues as to what those do, please let us know. Finally, just to point out that the lower connector is designated C1 and the upper connector is, gen is uh, designated C2. That tachometer signal we can pick up from pin 14 of the lower connector C1 on the earlier vehicles or from pin 1 of the lower connector C1 on the later vehicles. OK, also another, another signal we can pick up from those connectors behind the dash. Well, let's just talk about that taco um, signal again first. The taco signal goes in on pin 12 of the D-type connector or on pin 33 of the terminal blocks. The oil pressure sensor signal, the oil pressure signal, if that's available on your car, we'll look at where to pick that up from. So our oil pressure signal is available on pin 11 of the lower connector C1 on the earlier vehicles, or pin 8 of the lower connector C1 on the later vehicles. And that signal, which is a resistive signal to ground, with a range of about 0 to 100 ohms, uh, 100 ohms representing high oil pressure, and 0 representing no oil pressure, that signal goes in on pin 3 of the D-type connector, or pin 36 of the terminal block connectors. Also on this module, as on all modules, we have a onboard speaker. And the onboard speaker, which we use for generating audio tones and warning tones, that can be enabled, the onboard speaker, by putting a small wire link between pins 26 and 27 of the terminal blocks. If you want to use an external speaker instead, then remove that link and connect the high side of your external speaker, which needs to be an 8 ohm impedance speaker, connect the high side to pin 26 and the low side to pin 28. Other signals, other connections which are recommended to get the full functionality out of the unit, although not completely essential, are a number of push button, ground switch push buttons and two potentiometers for varying the brightness of the displays. Potentiometer number one, which varies the brightness of the numeric display, that's this display here. On this little box here, it's connected to a red wire and a green wire. And we connect those to pins 22 and 23 of the terminal blocks. Potentiometer number two, which controls the brightness of all the other displays, connected to pins 24 and 25 of the terminal blocks. We are going to incorporate into the software the option of having the brightness of the entire display controlled by a single potentiometer. We have some ground switched buttons as well, a latching switch, SW1, which is the white wire coming from this box. And that, could, that goes in on pin 13 of the terminal blocks. And push button number one, which is a momentary connection to ground on pin 14 of the terminal blocks, push button number 2 on pin 15 of the terminal blocks. Those potentiometers that we talked about a moment ago can also go in through the D-type connector because we had some spare connectors on there so we um, wired those up so that you can, you can use this connector for the pots as well. And pot number 1 can alternatively go in on, on pin 6 of the D-type connector, pot number 2 alternatively go in on pin 7 of the D-type connector.
what else do we have on here? A high sensitivity switch to enable the bar gauge, which normally operates with one additional LED for each 200 RPM, but that can be doubled by the operation of a ground switched signal on pin 11 of the D-type connector or pin 12 of the terminal block connectors. Let's just demonstrate some of those functions that we've just spoken about. What we'll also notice is that when we first power this module up, we'll see the version of software momentarily displayed on the numeric display. The version of software being run on this module is version 0 0.6. Excuse me, 0 0.06. So if I power this up, Neil, if you want to power it up, you have to connect the unit. Time for juice, RC. Let's try again and power it up. Version 0 0.06 you see is uh, identified on the display. If we put a TACO signal on, then we're reading 1300 RPM, 1200 RPM, and you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six LEDs on the display illuminated. If I operate that high sensitivity ground switch that I just mentioned, you'll see it doubles the number of LEDs. You'll notice a slight strobing on the video, that's not visible in reality, it's just the way that the video time base gives that strobing effect. Let's look at the... Let's just turn the light away for a moment so we can see the display a little bit better. Let's look at the, um, the brightness controls that we mentioned. Potentiometer number one which we have hooked up. If I turn that right down you'll see that the numeric display brightness can go from nothing to maximum. And the potentiometer number two, if I turn that down, all the other displays will go down to zero brightness. If you don't connect those potentiometers, the module will just operate at full brightness. Additional connections that we have on here, let's just switch that off for a moment. Switch off the TACO signal and switch off the power. Um, other connections that we have on here include a ground switch signal to allow you to boot the unit, to reset the unit, and that is on terminal block pin 20. And there's a, there's a convenient ground on pin 21, so you can just connect a switch between pins 20 and 21 on the terminal blocks if you want to use that external reset. We have RS-232 communications bus, which is provided on pins 29 and 30 for the receive side of that bus, that signals going into the module, and pins 31 and 32 for the transmit side of that bus for signals coming out of the module. And we're going to um, increase the functionality of those features um, in due course. We also have a number of spare discrete inputs which don't do anything in the software right now, but will be um, available for custom versions of the software if required. And those spare inputs we have, let's see, seven spare high side, high side switched inputs on terminal block pins five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And we have four spare low side switched discrete inputs on terminal block pins sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And 19. And that, I think, just about covers it for this unit, except to say that, um, as with all the units, we have a six way connector on board this GCM, generic control module, which is the heart of all of our um, DASH modules. And that six way connector enables um, reprogramming of software upgrades, custom software versions, and so forth as we release new software versions. In terms of the displays, um, the engine RPM is displayed as a numeric and as this power arc, which is effectively a bar gauge with 32 elements. But these um, bar gauges at the bottom 
These can be configured either to operate as single 14 element displays or as pairs of 7 element displays. By default, we configure them as three 14 element displays. Uh, the upper one is oil pressure, which we've mentioned. The lower one is supply voltage. In fact, let's just have a look at that supply voltage signal. Plug it in again, Neil. Plug it in. Okay, so supply voltage um, also has a over voltage limit, an over voltage indication. If it goes above about 15 volts, we'll get the, um, the diagnostic LEDs flashing. And this one here as well. If it goes below about 10 volts, we'll get the same effect. So these gauges reach between, read between about 10 volts and 15 volts. Now, this centre gauge, we configure to be a vacuum gauge and that reads from right to left. You can configure it to read left to right if you wish but by default we configure it to right to left. Vacuum gauges as a rule tend to operate in that sense. Connections to the map sensor or vacuum sensor we suggest that you get a separate map sensor. Don't try to use the one that's used by the ECM in the car as that can cause problems. At connections to that map sensor, uh, we provide a reference signal out from the module, a 5 volt reference signal, which comes out via fuse number 2, that's this one, small 200 milliamp fuse, um, on pin 5 of the D-type connector or on pin 34 of the terminal blocks. The actual signal, the actual map sensor signal coming back from the sensor needs to be fed into pin 4 of the D-type connector or pin 35 of the terminal blocks.